Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the deal. Uh, in the previous lesson, Gideon, who they named him, uh, nicknamed him Jerubbabel, um, with the hand of the Lord, had helped gain a great victory over the Midianites who were persecuting Israel, God's enemies, not Israel, not Israel being God's enemies, but the Midianites, God, its enemies. And the thing is, he was, after the victory, he was considered, you know, a rock star, right? Says he had many wives and he also had a concubine. And we're going to read about the son of of the concubine. The concubine's kind of like a second class wife. So, you know, a lot of guys think, oh, yeah, man, it'd be great having multiple wives, except for the, this kind of a problem that's coming up, where the sons all are fighting each other from all the different wives. Then you got a problem. Uh, one of King David's sons, Absalom, decided he didn't wait, want to wait for his father to die to be king. He thought, well, I'm going to help. I'm going to help along uh, this little process. And, you know, I'm going to kill my dad and then I'm going to take his place. I don't think I'm going to, I don't think Absalom's going to be in the kingdom, but that's just my guess. All right, so let's go to Judges chapter 9. And by the way, I'm going to post some things on my Telegram account that I dare not post here. So just so you know, there are some things on Telegram. Uh, and Odyssey is a bust. Odyssey is... Uh, doing censorship just like gab i had a uh, video on odyssey and it's you no i'm the only one that can see it evidently yeah they want you to think oh yeah you, you know we don't censor yeah you do you bunch of liars sure you do so whatever telegram for now I guess they haven't discovered who I am yet. But when they do, they'll censor too, I'm sure, because they're owned by a Russian J who's a member of the WEF. And if you don't know who that is, uh, look up uh, Schwab. Yeah. And no, not the uh, investment firm. The other one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the son of Gideon by the concubine. Let's read that story. This is not a good story. I don't like these kind of stories, but they're part of the book. So let's read it. Get your King James Bible. We're turning to the book of Judges, chapter 9, verse 1. And Abimelech the son of Jerubbabel, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren. So he is of the people of Shechem. That's where his mother was from, from Shechem. And uh, his father was Gideon or Jerubbabel. So, and Abimelech, the son of Jerubbabel, went to Shechem unto his mother's brethren and communed with them and with all the family of the house of his mother's father saying speak i pray you in the ears of all the men of shechem whether it is better for you either that all the sons of jerubbabel which are three score and ten seventy reign over you you know reign as in rule not water from the sky or that one reign over you. So you want 70 people to rule over you, or do you want one? 
Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. Now remember, uh, when Jerubbabel Gideon was alive, they wanted to make him the ruler, the leader. And he said, nope, the Lord's going to be your king. But uh, this guy, he's um, he's trying to he's trying to do uh, the down low thing, you know. Or that one reign shall reign over you. Remember also that I am your bone and your flesh. And his mother's brethren spake of him in the ears of all the men of Shechem all these words, and their hearts inclined to follow Abimelech, for they said. He is our brother. And he gave them three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Baal Beerith. Now, how come he's 70 pieces of silver? How, how come? One piece of silver for each uh, son of Gideon, Jerubbabel. And remember, Baal Beerith is uh, the house of Albarith, that's the uh, the house of the false god. And they gave him three score and ten pieces of silver out of the house of Albarith, wherewith Abimelech hired vain and light persons which followed him. What is vain? Means worthless. So here it is, he's hiring worthless people and light persons. And he went unto his father's house. All right, so he went unto his father's house at Ophrah and slew, he killed and slew his brethren, the sons of Jerubbabel, being three score and ten persons upon one stone. Can you imagine that? He's killing all his half brothers. Notwithstanding, let Jot, Jotham, the youngest son of Jerubbabel, was left, for he hid himself. And all the men of Shechem gathered together in all the house of Milo, and went and made Abimelech king by the plain of the pillar that was in Shechem. Wow. So this is how the men of Shechem pay back Gideon for helping them against the Midianites. They kill all his sons except for this Abimelech. So they went and made him king. Verse 7. And when they told it to Jotham, he went and stood in the top of Mount Gizurim and lifted up his voice and cried and said unto them, so here it is the only surviving kid of Gideon's other sons. He goes to the top of the mountain and I guess he's shouting, right? And he said unto them, Hearken unto me, ye men of Shechem. So listen to me, ye men of Shechem, that God may hearken unto you. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. So this is a parable. And, you know, trees will not anoint a king. Okay, so I guess this is kind of a reference to family trees, my guess. The trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, reign thou over us. Hey, olive tree, we want you to be our king and rule over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness? You know, oil, olive oil. Well, olive oil is a type of fat. Shall I leave my fatness wherewith by me they honor God and men and go to be promoted over the trees? And the tree said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. Now remember, the fig tree is a symbol of Judah. But the fig tree said unto them, Should I forsake my sweetness and my good fruit and go to be promoted over the trees? 
Then said the trees unto the vine. Now the the vine, the grapevine, was the um, symbol of Israel. And the vine said unto them, Should I leave my wine? Now we're talking about grapes. Which cheereth God and man? And go to be promoted over the trees? Then all the trees said unto the bramble, a bramble is a bush, you know. Now Webster's 1828 dictionary, of which I have a lot of respect for, and uh, one day when the internet goes out, this would be an excellent thing to have because he, uh, not only was he a, a believer in Christ, but he standardized all the spelling of English, but he was a scholar. I mean, Webster was a scholar. I'm talking about the dictionary guy. He knew Latin. He knew Greek. He knew Hebrew. He knew German, French, Italian. He spoke over fluently over 20 languages. He could go anywhere in Europe and pretty much understand. I mean, and he knew the roots of all the words. I, this guy was something. But a bramble, according to Webster's, is a raspberry or blackberry bush. Uh, they have what they call prickles, you know, thorns. And uh, so it's common language, any rough prickly bush or shrub. Not much of a tree, but, uh, you know. So here it is. They're talking about a plant with thorns. So let's go. Um, verse 14. Then said all the trees unto the bramble, Come thou and reign over us. And the bramble said unto the trees, Now, oh, if in truth ye anoint me king over you, then come and put your trust in my shadow. And if not, let fire come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. Hmm. Some uh, parable here. Come and put your trust in my shadow, and if not, let fire... Come out of the bramble and devour the cedars of Lebanon. So, yeah, let uh, the Zabumbalek end up burning up all the people, the cedars of Lebanon, which, you know, the people of Shechem, right? 16. Now, therefore, if ye have done truly and sincerely, in that ye have made Abimelech king, and if ye have dealt well with Jerubbabel and his house, did they deal well with Jerubbabel and his house? They killed, what, all his sons. Is that dealing well? No. And if ye have dealt well with Jerubbabel and his house, and have done unto him according to the deserving of his hands, for my father fought for you and adventured his life far and delivered you out of the hand of Midian. And ye are risen up against my father's house this day and have slain his sons, three score and ten persons upon one stone. And have made Abimelech the son of his maidservant, not even a wife, a maidservant, king over the men of Shechem because he is your brother. But if ye then have dealt truly and sincerely with Jerubbabel and with his house this day, then rejoice ye in Abimelech, and let him rejoice also in you. But if not, let fire come out of Abimelech and devour the men of Shechem and the house of Milo, and let fire come out of the men of Shechem and from the house of Milo and devour Abimelech. Yeah, may you guys all burn each other up. And Jotham ran away and fled and went to beer. Went to beer? Is that Budweiser? 
I don't, I don't think so. And Jotham ran away and fled, went to Beer and dwelt there for the fear of Abimelech, his brother. When Abimelech had reigned three years over Israel, oh boy, here we go. Then God sent an evil spirit. Did you know that God can send an evil spirit? Oh, yeah. Did God send the devil or a devil? Maybe. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. Hmm. That the cruelty done to the threescore and ten sons of Jerubbabal might come, and their blood be lain upon Abimelech, their brother, which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. Wow. And the men of Shechem sent liars in wait for him. You know, they're setting a trap, an ambush. That's what they mean, lying in wait. They're hiding. And the men of Shechem sent liars in wait for him in the top of the mountains, and they robbed all that came along that way by them. And it was told Abimelech. And Gaul, the son of Eber, came with his brethren and went over to Shechem, and the men of Shechem put their confidence in him. And they went out into the fields and gathered their vineyards and trod trod the grapes and made merry and went into the house of their God and did eat and drink and cursed Abimelech. Did you catch that? They went into the house of their God and they did eat, drink, and be merry. Oh yeah. And they cursed Abimelech. Cursed the king that they had made up, right? And Gaul, the son of Ebed, said, Who is Abimelech? And who is Shechem, that we should serve him? Is, he, is not he the son of Jerubbabel and Zebul, his officer? Serve the men of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for why should we serve him? And would to God this people were under my hand, then would I remove Abimelech. Oh yeah, who's who does Abimelech and these people think they are? You know, if I was your king, I'd get rid of this guy. And he said to Abimelech, Increase thine army and come out. And when Zebul, the ruler of the city, heard the words of Gaul, the son of Ebed. His anger was kindled. So he's listening to this guy and he's mad, right? And he sent messengers unto Abimelech privily, you know, privately, secretly, saying, Behold, Gaul, the son of Ebed, and his brethren be come to Shechem, and behold, they fortify the city against thee. So they're planning a coup. They're going to, they're going to, they're strengthening the city to prepare for war against you. Verse 32. Now therefore up by night, thou and the people that is with thee and lie in wait in the field. You know, set a trap. Hide in the field, set a trap. And it shall be that in the morning, as soon as the sun is up, thou shalt rise early and set upon the city. And behold, when he and the people that is with him come out against thee, then mayest thou do to them as thou shalt find occasion. You know, do to them whatever you can. And Abimelech rose up and all the people that were with him by night and they laid wait against Shechem in four companies. So, you know, if you were if you were a watchman on a in a tower in a city looking out for enemies, 
and you see the enemy far off coming towards the city, you're going to blow the horn, blow the trumpet, sound the alarm, get everybody out of bed, let them grab their weapons and meet them at the gate and at the walls. But guess what? They went there at night when nobody could see them. They camped out and hid in the fields just outside the city. So all of a sudden, they're there. There's no warning sounded. Think about it. And Abimelech rose up and all the people that were with him by night, and they laid, laid wait against Shechem in four companies. And Gal, the son of Ebed, went out and stood in the entering of the gate of the city. And Abimelech rose up and the people that were with him from lying in wait. So all of a sudden, they look, they're looking around and all of a sudden, there's all these people coming and attacking. Surprise attack. And when Gaul saw the people, he said to Zebul, Behold, there come people down from the top of the mountains. And Zebul said unto him, Thou seest the shadow of the mountains as if they were men. Now remember, Zebul uh, was the one that warned Abimelech. So I don't know if he is... Um, mocking him here or giving him false information or maybe both i don't know and gall spoke spake again and said see there come people down by the middle of the land and another company come along by the plain of meon Enum. then said zebul unto him where is now thy mouth yeah, remember when you were speaking all those things about how great you were and how you're going to kick uh, kick Abimelech's rear end? Yeah, where's your boasting now? Where is now thy mouth wherewith thou saidest, Who is Abimelech that we should serve him? Is not this the people that thou hast despised? Go out, I pray now, and fight with them. And Gaal went out before the men of Shechem, and fought with Abimelech. And Abimelech chased him, and he fled before him, and many were overthrown and wounded, even unto the entering of the gate. And Abimelech dwelt at Ar Arumah, and Zebul thrust out Gaul and his brethren, that they should not dwell in Shechem. And it came to pass on the morrow that people went out into the field and they told Abimelech and he took the people and divided them into three companies and laid wait in the field and looked and behold the people were come forth out of the city and he rose up against them and smote them and Abimelech and the company that was with him rushed forward and stood in the entering of the gate of the city and the other two companies ran upon all the people that were in the fields and slew them and Abimelech fought against the city all that day and he took the city and slew the people that was therein and beat down the city and sowed it with salt uh, you know that was something the Romans used to do if they conquered a area that they didn't like uh, they would throw salt on the ground because guess what if there's a if there's a lot of salt on the ground plants will not grow it's too salty so, and when all the men of the tower of Shechem, the tower of Shechem, heard that, they entered into an hold of the house of the god Berith. God Berith. Not the god of the Bible. Nope. And it was told Abimelech that all the men of the tower of Shechem were gathered together. And Abimelech got him up to Mount Zalmon, he and all the people that were with him, and Abimelech took an axe in his hand and cut down a bough from the trees and took it and laid it on his shoulder and said unto the people that were with him, What ye have seen me do, make haste and do as I have done. 
So everybody grab an axe and cut a branch from the tree, you know, leaves and branches. And all the people likewise cut down every man his bow and followed Abimelech and put them to the hold and set the hold on fire upon them so that all the men of the tower of Shechem died also, about a thousand men and women. So did the, uh, did the fire kill them? Or the smoke? I, you know, could have been both. Either or, or both. I don't know. Then went Abimelech to Thebes and encamped against Thebes and took it. But there was a strong tower within the city. And thither fled all the men and women and all they of the city and shut it to them and got them up to the top of the tower. I'm guessing this is where that guy that tried to, uh, Gaul, the guy that tried to overthrow uh, Abimelech was from. I believe this is where he was from. So, everybody in this city that Abimelech had taken, their, they fled to the tower and shut it up. And they're on the top of the tower. And Abimelech came unto the tower and fought against it and went hard unto the door of the tower to burn it with fire. Check this out. And a certain woman cast a piece of a millstone upon Abimelech's head and all to break his skull. Um, a piece of a millstone. Generally, a millstone in the Bible was, I believe, 70 pounds. So that's about 32 kilograms for you people in the uh, European Union. So it's a piece of it. You know, you're talking probably, you know, five pound piece of rock and she dropped it or maybe threw it either way can you imagine a five pound rock hitting you in the head going about 100 miles an hour or uh i don't know how many uh let's see let's just say over 100 kilometers an hour fast and smack seam on the head. So it probably cracked his skull. So she dropped a, a rock on his head and all to break his skull. And then Abimelech, then he also uh, then then he called hastily unto the young man, his armor bearer. You know, that's the armor bearers, you know, young guy, you take a young guy and have him carry your uh, armor around, you know, sort of like a knight and a squire. The squire was a knight in training, but he would carry the uh, things that the knight needed for when he was in battle, you know, his water bottle, his food, uh, his armor, you know, helmet sword and all, all that stuff right so abimelech calls unto the young man his armor bearer and said to him draw thy sword and slay me he must have known he's going to die he's got a cracked skull right draw thy score sword and slay me that men say not of me a woman slew me <laughs> Yeah, a woman killed him. A woman slew me, and his young man thrust him through, and he died. So the men of Shechem died. Abimelech died. Just like, you know, fire from the bramble to the cedars and the cedars from the bramble. They all died. And when the men of Israel saw that Abimelech was dead, they departed every man unto his place. Thus God rendered the wickedness of Abimelech which he did unto his father in slaying his 70 brethren. And all the evil of the men of Shechem did God render upon their heads, and upon them came the curse of Jotham, the son of Jerubbabel. And there you have it. See, having multiple wives with sons by all these different women can make a lot of problems. 
you may not live to see it, but yeah, I, I guess that's why the Bible says that a, uh, a bishop should be the husband of one wife. You know what, you, you know what, um, you know what you call, uh, when you got two wives, double trouble. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't know, but ask any Mormon, right? Yeah. Mormons are trouble. If you ask me. So, well, they don't believe the Bible. They, they claim they use the Bible, but they don't believe it. That's why they got the Book of Mormon. Another gospel. So, well, they call it, it's another testament. Not another gospel. It's another testament. Well, sounds like another gospel to me. Paul said that if any bring any other gospel, let them be cursed. Accursed. So, yeah. Yeah. So, that's the way it goes. All right, everybody, I hope you uh, enjoyed the book of Judges. You know, it's sad. The Lord uses somebody's hand to fight against our enemies and the Lord's enemies. And and uh, bad things bad things happen from the hands of humans. We're all fallen. We all have the fallen nature. So, if anybody thinks they've arrived, uh, you got have, might have something to say about that. I, I, you know, what can I tell you? All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.